Okay, so welcome back. Um, last week we talked about how to create the token, the ERC20 token. And of course it wasn't the entire process, it's not really the full thing that people who actually deploy ERC20 tokens usually do, but it is very, very close to the reality. It is usually a code that was copied from a previous coin with a very simple uh, modifications. Um, there are some tests maybe that a professional team might do as well to make sure that the code is indeed secure, that it is indeed up to date with all of the latest standards um, and so on. But basically this is it. They take the code, they copy it and, they, and then they can deploy it and it is a ERC20 compatible token. And I have created last week this Shlomi coin and I've um, issued this uh, Shlomi coin and what I want to do right now I want to take this issue in process and I want to change it just a little bit so that potential buyers will be able to buy this coin to send some eaters to this uh, contract address and then they will receive this SCO coin over here at a fixed price that we are going to uh, determine in a few minutes. And the way to do so is, I'm sure that some of you already guessed, it's basically doing another copy-paste. I will go back to the Zeppelin website, to the Zeppelin GitHub, and from here I can see this CrowdSell token dot SOL. And this is the only modification that I need to add to my contract in order to have my uh, contract, my coin, um, issuable, you can say, in order to offer it to the potential buyers. So let's just copy this code from here. And we are going to remove this simple token um, contract and put our new crowd sell token contract. Once again, I'm just going to change its name. I'm going to change it to uh, Shlomi coin as before. And it's going to be SCO. Three decimal point is enough for me. And now this address, even though it is called a multi-sig address, it can be just a regular address. Into this address, whenever you will send one ether to my smart contract, the address that is um, specified or declared here will be the address that will eventually get those ether. So if I am issuing tokens, I usually issue them because I need to get money for my company. I want to buy new equipment maybe for my company or whatever. And I need to specify an Ethereum address to which the money should eventually flow to so that later on I will be able to claim those ether. So let us just uh, choose an address to place over here and the address, let's take it for MetaMask over here, I'm going to take this address 0x69e79 whatever, this is the address. So let's remove this and place it like this and there we go. Now whenever somebody will try to buy SCO, the ether that they will buy, the ether that they will pay for that SCO coin will go to this address over here. Over here I got the option to set the price. Um, how many tokens, how many SCOs the buyer will receive if he pay one ether. In this example it's going to be 500. I'm going to keep it like this. When somebody will send me one ether, he will get 500 SCO. And over here, I got a function to create the token. And I also got what is known as the fallback function. This function is called whenever somebody tried to send money to my smart contract. Um, again, it's a bit irrelevant, you don't have to go through into it. 
Um, it's slightly irrelevant for the purpose of this video because this video is not really to teach you how to build ICO, but just to show you how simple the process is really is. And so I'm not really going to talk about these um, functions in depth. But I just want to compile now my SCO contract. And there is an error. Why is that? Line 141. Oh. It seems that the crowd cell contract is somewhat is for some reason not compatible with this save math um, smart contract that we talked about in the previous tutorial. Why is that? Let's have a look for a minute. Oh. It says that they fixed it six days ago. Change safe to. Okay. Let's have a look at the safe mat uh, contract. Now it's called multiply instead of safe multiply, I guess. The same for divide and um, subtract add, etc. Let's go back to our contracts. The token over here. And maybe they are doing using S. No, they don't do it. Uh, maybe it's in standard token. Standard token. Again, no, maybe basic token. Yes, using safe math for unsigned integer. For those of you who are familiar with those architectural aspects, they are basically masking this safe math uh, function uh, for this unsigned integer. Um, for those of you who don't really care for that type of differences, there are two options. One, I guess, will be to just copy-paste, again, all of those libraries into our code, not libraries, sorry, contracts, into our code. This should work. But I am just going to take this code for the crowd cell token and I will try to make it compatible with the old version of the safe math library. And this is actually a great example for, on the one hand, it's extremely simple, extremely simple to do ECR20 tokens and ICOs. On the other hand, it does require the person that does it to actually know what it is that he is doing um, because there is a lot of small issues that might arise during this process. So I will try to make this contract crowd cell token which I just copied from this Zeppelin website which is seem to be not compatible to the other contracts that I have copied about a week ago, they were changed six days ago, I will try to make it work together. First of all, it's supposed to be safe multiply. The message value with the get price. Okay. And let's move this total supply. Save. Add. Total supply and tokens. What else is missing? Over here, add as well. So let's take this. Save. Add. 
now it seems to be compatible. I just changed the function um, from the, as you can see over here, over here, in safe math, that they have changed the name of the function and also they changed a little bit the way those functions are implemented. I changed them back from uh, multiply or divide or subst uh, subtract, not submarine I guess, subtract, back to safe multiply and safe add and safe add again and so on. And now we are ready to deploy our smart contract, our ICO smart contract. But before I do that, I just want to make one more um, improvement to this smart contract. And this one just going to be safe divide. This result this result, this is the amount of tokens that is going to be issued, but I don't want to give the amount as is. I want it to be divide, divided by one ether. <clears throat> and the reason that they do it, this uh, an extra divide over here, once again, it's not really that important for the purpose of this video, but because Ethereum um, works in a very large denomination, it is sometimes very hard to follow all the decimal places and when you try to send amount of coins, sometimes you might accidentally send more or less than what you initially intended to do. It can be one of the way to avoid it, it's not the only way, but one of the way to avoid it is by doing this normalization. Basically, I'm going to take the number of tokens that are issued and divide, it, divide this number by um, one ether in its most low denomination form, which if I'm not mistaken is one followed by, I think, 18 zeros. It's a very, very long number but it will help us to make sure that all the decimal points are in place. So I'm just adding this extra line. So I'm just adding this extra uh, safe divide. Okay, so now it is time for us to actually deploy our crowd cell token. Yeah, there we go. So let's create our token. And you know what? I want to deploy it from another contract, from another address, I'm sorry. I don't want to deploy it from this address. I want to deploy it from another Ethereum address, just so we can see the difference between the address that deployed the contract, the address that received the funds eventually, the address that tries to buy, to buy some uh, uh, SCO coins and whatnot. So let's just change it to another user to another account. There we go. And now we're going to create this uh, smart contract, this ICO contract, except, oh, and it was almost immediately um, issued. So I just copy this address. And let's go to our missed wallet under contract we can go to watch token and I just insert it and you can immediately see that I got Shlomi coin, SEO, three decimal points. This time I didn't um, allocated any coins to myself. The initial amount of coin starts with zero. Nobody has any Shlomi coin at the moment, but I can buy some and buying some Shlomi coin is a very simple process. All that I need to do is to send one ether to the contract address of Shlomi coin. This address over here is this address of this Shlomi coin. So I just send it one ether. And once I send it one ether, I should get 500 of my SCO. 
Let's do it. Accept. And let's wait for a minute. Okay, there we go. Now you can see that I have 500 SCO. I received 500 SEO for uh, my one ether, the one ether that I sent. And the one ether that I sent is not stored on this contract, 0, 3, E, 4, D, whatever. It was immediately transferred to this account over here, this account right over here, account number two, because I have specified this account, 6, 9, E, 7, 9, to be the recipient of the ethers. There we go, 6, 9, E, 7, 9, and so on. This is the address. Now, that was a very, very basic, quick, easy demonstration on how ICOs can be. Not always. It's not always the same, but this is the main architecture. This is the main idea. This is how they usually do it. And, and I want to go back to the original point, the original statement with which I started this whole video tutorials. It's okay, it's okay to use ICOs to raise funds, it really is okay, but the buyers of those tokens need to understand how generic those um, contracts really are and act accordingly. So this is it, and I hope that you found those videos somewhat, only somewhat, um, useful to you. Um, and think about it next time that you are rushing into an ICO. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.